Hey guys, what's up? So this is going to be me fumbling around with um, getting Travis the build uh, continuous integration tool. And just so you guys know, continuous integration is kind of like a, um, a blanket statement for uh, essentially being able to automate a lot of the build process. And what the build process is, is anytime you have a bunch of files that are being deployed to a server, you're going to have differences in those files in a development environment compared to like a production environment. Um, as you start getting into even bigger, more complex programs and stuff like that and, and development, you know, for major companies, they not just have one, you know, they may not have one production environment. They have, might have multiple tiers and multiple different levels of, of, you know, different databases and things that they use for regression testing and integration testing and all this stuff. So ultimately things can get very unwieldy. So uh, a Travis continuous integration tool is just built so, to be able to automate some of that stuff. And, and basically it's set up on uh, like GitHub so that you should be able to just, every time you check in a change to your GitHub and you push it, your change in, uh, this integration tool should automatically run. And I'm sure you guys have seen it where it's like, you know, Travis test, you know, fail and all this stuff. So there's quite a lot going on um, with what I'm working on right now um, that I've just recently started getting involved in. So I can't really do a tutorial on it, but um, I just figured that, you know what, there's some blogs out there that kind of help you out a little bit, but to me it was a, it was a little bit lacking um, so let me go ahead and um, and just show you guys number one uh, what we got going on so here's this Bayside project which is you know I've talked about this this open source project that I'm just kind of messing around with to get more familiar with node and, and github and uh, the entire git process really so the the first thing I needed to do in fact this doesn't even have uh, so I'm refreshing it here I went into github and you have to create a dot travis.yml file and inside here, there's actually a specific way that you have to set this up so that if you're using Node uh, or Ruby or Python, whatever it is, there's going to be a different way that you do this. And um, essentially, this is just checking all the different Node versions. Specifically, I'm developing for Node 5.1. So it, it's, it's a nice feature that this will actually run the code and, and see that it's valid for Node, um, either different versions of Node that, that you're not even developing in locally so that's one major benefit of using a tool like this um, number two like I said it, it automatically fires off as soon as you actually submit a build so before I even submit a build here what I want to do is actually do a, uh, a pull on my git um, and I'm using Visual Studio co uh, co uh, code and this is something that um, let me see here All right, so I need to actually commit before I can pull these down. Uh, so let me make sure. I, you can see the changes that I've made here. And I'll explain this in just a moment. But let me go ahead and commit these. So to say, added uh, Mocha test framework. All right, so now that I've, I've done that, um, it's going to wait a second. And now I can do a pull. So I'm pulling the changes down from the server. Okay, and now that I've done that, um, there's no conflicts or anything, so everything should be down. And one of the things I should have pointed out is this Travis.yml file was not down on my local system because uh, that is something that I added from GitHub, and I didn't add it from my local environment. So I have three files checked out on my local environment that I'm going to push up to GitHub, the repository. But this Travis.yml was created on the repository, and I just pulled it down by doing that. Uh, that pull command. So now that that's in here, um, everything's fine, but I still need to push up my changes. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'll go ahead and uh, go over here and I'll just say push. So now this is going to prompt me to put in my username, uh, email, and password for Git, which I'll go ahead and do that. All right, and just for security purposes, I'm not going to show you guys um, you know, my, my information there. So now um, I went ahead and I put that in, so I pushed it up. So if I go back over to uh, GitHub and I refresh, you can see that now this 28 commits. If I click on a commit, you can see that um, you know all these, these changes have been made. So let's look at this. You can see this added Mocha test framework. So you guys saw me push that up. And... All right, now that that is done, um, one of the things that Travis YML is going to end up doing is it's going to run my uh, my test command. 
So that was something that actually had me confused initially. I have this test and, uh, and I just have two basic tests because I've never used Mocha before. But Mocha is a project that is uh, specifically, it's probably the most popular testing framework tool for, uh, for, for Node.js. Hold on a second, I'm trying to pull it up. So here is this, uh, so it's a testing framework. And um, if you guys have never done unit testing, I'm gonna probably do a different series on how to unit test and stuff like that, or at least show you guys what I'm doing. But uh, ultimately you should be testing your code and, and Mocha can do that for you. It makes it a lot easier. And I put it all inside this test folder. So I just have two plain tests that are just returning uh, successful. And then what I, what I did is I went into my uh, NPM init config file for my Node.js project. And really it's uh, the package.json. So if you run npm init, it creates a package.json for you. And then here I went ahead and I um, added to the dev dependencies. That way people that are downloading my project aren't going to be downloading uh, this Mocha framework just to run my project or be able to use my project. This is just specifically in a dev dependency because you only want that to be, yeah, it's really only necessary for the development for anybody that's you know contributing to this stuff. So there's that. Okay, so next thing is is I went ahead and I edited the script. So this test is actually using these keywords, and it says Mocha, uh, and then it tells it to look for the forward slash test directory. So it dot you know goes back a directory, and then it finds this test folder. And then I do the flag recursive because I actually want all the, the test files in here to be run. So that's what the hyphen hyphen recursive is. So if I were to run this from my command line, I would just say npm test. And what npm test is doing is it knows to look inside your packages.json file. It says, oh, here's test. It's a script command because I'm running it from the command line. So by running test, it's secretly behind the scenes actually running Mocha uh, dot test hyphen hyphen recursive so you can see it's actually it, it ran both of those tests so here's the first one here's the second one and both are passing so two passing tests so that's good so now what I need to be able to figure out though is how do I get travis.yml to actually run uh, you know this test so let's go ahead and um, and do that real quick and I'm not even sure and I've never done this before, actually, so I don't know if this is going to work at all. Um, but let's go ahead and look at the Travis account that I have. All right, so here's my... So I'm actually looking at all these... Uh, and here's another thing, too. This is actually going to tell you for all the different project types, the options that you have. All right, so here is uh, the Travis CI. So this is actually something that you use in conjunction with GitHub. And when you actually create a Travis CI account, you can create your account from GitHub. And then um, once you're in Travis CI, you can actually see all of the projects you have by going to your profile. And then inside here, you can see all the projects that you have admin uh, rights to, which is interesting because some of these I don't even own um, and had hardly anything to do with. Um, well, actually, most of these are forks. Never mind. So they're all admins. I'm sorry. These are all forks uh, of mine, uh, which I don't do anything with so many of those. Um, but anyway, here's the, the Bayside one that I actually enabled to, to active. So that way, when I go ahead and I click on this, we did a check-in, and it's the fourth check-in. And you can see that it has a status where it says, okay, um, I ran into a problem targeting the node.06 version and it really I don't even know what this problem would be but I don't even know that I care because I don't really want to target that low of a version so what I'm gonna do then I'm actually going to update uh, my Travis um, YML file within github to tell it not to to target that version because really I, I don't want to I can actually just edit it right in here um, and I'll go ahead and do that and I'll say uh, not targeting point zero six node so I mean for me that I mean that that goes way back with nodes uh, original implementation and really I'm using 5.1 and I probably should upgrade mine but for the most part um, 
you know, it's probably good in some sense. And you can see that now we have another commit. So you can see not targeting Node.js 6. So now Travis should automatically pick up on that. So you can see now this build process is going on. And it's running everything because it said not targeting dot zero six nodes. So that is the latest commit. And once again, this is the whole, the whole continuous integration thing. So I checked in something, uh, but it could be another team member that checked in something. But automatically, this thing is going to run all the tests that you tell it to run. And if a test were to fail, then this should notify you that that test had failed and everything. Um, but you can see everything everything passed. And if we click on it, we can see more information. Um, you could even see that the tests down here were run. So this thing was smart enough to know, hey, look at the uh, package.json file and run the test command, which ended up firing off Mocha. And it was even smart enough to know that you know Mocha is a part of the dev dependency and everything. So ultimately, this is uh, this is pretty sweet, I think, because uh, I don't know, it's pretty sweet. This is the first time I've even started messing with this, so I think that's really awesome. But I've been telling you guys, um, you ask like, how how do I get my name out there? How do I do this and that? Um, yeah, you know, start, start your GitHub account, guys. Build a project. Help me on this one if you want. I mean, I'll try to help you through it, even if you're a complete noob. Um, but the, I mean, it's just you, you got to play around. You got to poke around with this stuff. And uh, it, it, this was really confusing. So hopefully this gives you guys a little bit of a, of a high level. And it's not like a step by step. I'll probably do a separate video of like a step by step. How did I do this? You know, starting from like building a, a blank repository and then making a first couple of commits. But on this video, you guys saw me do a commit. You saw me do a pull. You saw me um, add stuff to my inits, uh, my package.json files so that it could automatically run my Mocha tests and everything. You even saw how uh, the Travis CI was integrated into GitHub using the Travis.yml file and you know the versions of Node that we were targeting. So let me know if you guys have any questions or anything. Hopefully this was somewhat helpful for anybody that might not know what CI tools and Travis's and uh, you know benefit or even what a unit test is so uh, unit testing is very you know fairly complex subject and uh, I'll talk about that more in the future but thanks guys thanks for watching have a good day bye